Hello, Paula. Hello, Fabi. We're a little earlier than expected here, right? But we're here together. Hello, Paula. Hello, Fabi. We're... Hello, friends. In a minute, we're going to begin the beauty of a message from the book Psychophonic Instructions. Guilon Ribeiro comes here to us to deliver a beautiful message, wonderful message. So this book is simply phenomenal. We're a little early today, testing our systems, right? A little early and we can talk about how important it is to study these books. How important it is to study these books on spiritism. One thing is to read, another is to study. Because when we study, we pay attention to the style of the, the author, to the words they use, because these spirits don't spare words. And we reflect on the meaning, we reflect on the in between the lines, the whole, the whole message. So in these studies that we're doing at Kardec Radio, we're going deeper and deeper. And of course, if we, in a year, two years, 10 years, we go back, we're certainly going to be surprised by how deep these messages were, are. So here we are. Welcome to Kardec Radio here at 11 p.m. when we are nourishing our souls together. Yes, we're nourishing our souls with these immortal messages that come from illuminated minds through Chico Xavier. As you know, or you may not know, so I'll tell you, there was a mediumistic meeting in the city of, in the city of Pedro Leopoldo in the Spiritist Group May May. Arnaldo Rocha was the, the very director of this meeting, and Chico Xavier was one of the mediums in this meeting. There were around like 20 people, mediums, counselors, and people who were also uh, supporting, assisting the mediumistic meeting. And then at the end of the disobsession, the rescue work, they received these messages through Chico Xavier through his speaking mediumship. Why is it so important for us? Because in these messages, we have contents that are immortalized for us in this book, but not only that, that come to boost in our immortal souls, contents that are divine, that if we bring it out, we're going to be much happier, right? So today, Guilon Ribeiro comes through Chico Xavier. Who was him? Who was he? Who was he? Luis Olimpio Guilon Ribeiro. He was born in the state of Maranhão, northeast of Brazil, beautiful state. And he discarnated in Rio de Janeiro. He was born in 1875 and he was discarnated in 1943. He got married and had five children. Professionally, he was a sub civil engineer. He was also a journalist. He spoke many languages and he became one of the main, the most important translators of Kardec's works from French to Portuguese. Mm. He became a spiritist in 1911 after the death of his mother. And after that, he embraced the cause of spiritism. At a point, he became the president of the Brazilian Spiritist Federation at critical times as well, when he was helping the spiritist movement to move forward at a time in which spiritism was at the beginning steps in Brazil and in the world as well. 
He was born in the 19th century. He discarnated almost halfway through the 20th century and comes on the night of May 26, 1955, to talk to all of us, not only to them. This book came to a purpose to reach you and I and those who are in the future generations to talk about things we can't forget or can't lose sight. It's about watching and pray. You've heard Jesus saying, watch and pray, but why does he come to us now, Guilherme Ribeiro, to say these words? Why is it so important to immortalize this message? You want to hear that? You do? Me too. Because when we do, it's really, really therapeutic. So here we are. Welcome, friends. I see wonderful friends here. Edgar is here. A big hug to you. Ale de Paula, a big hug to you. Sunshine today. I'm saying hi to so many of you because we can be super live. I see Paula, Fabi. Hello, friends. Hello, Vanessa Godoy. Hello, Carol Correia. Hello, Narciso. Hello, Iva Ribeiro. Daisy Gallen. Hello, Daisy. Marilda Vega, big hug to you, Marilda. Sol Souza, super hug to you, Sol. And Luana. Luana is always in our prayers, always in our hearts. Super tight hug on her. Teresa Castro, super hug to you, too. Super duper hug. Sunshine. Hello, sunshine. Hello, John the Rosa. How are you, Lisa Telles? Welcome, friends. Here we are. We are going to begin. Are you ready? This message is for you and for me. Some people say, but, ah, but I'm not a spiritist. You know, once you got to know of it, you're in the boat. So this message is for all of us. And they say here that when he came to speak through Chico Xavier, there was a form of transfiguration. Chico Xavier was an extraordinary medium. He was a speaking medium. He was a hearing medium, a seeing medium, a speaking medium, a um, writing medium. He was a medium of healing, in fact. He had so many different types of mediumship. When the spirit, Guilherme Ribeiro, comes to deliver the message, Chico Xavier's face is transfigured. These are the words of Arnaldo Rocha. And he says that uh, he comes to give us a very, very compelling message. May we have eyes to see ears to hear and move forward, okay? He begins. My brothers, may the will of our Heavenly Father be glorified. And I'll ask you this question. Because, you know, we read this, oh, it sounds so beautiful. Why does he come and say that? To glorify the will of God. It seems so simple, right? Oh, may we glorify the will of God. It seems like mere words. I don't think that they are mere words. What is to glorify the will of God? Glorify. To glorify is to praise. It's to worship. It's to admire. Question for you and I. Do you admire the will of God? Do you praise the will of God? And then you ask, if you ask a fair question, what is the will of God, Vanessa? Good question, because we're all on the same boat. What is the will of God? At each and every step, we need to identify what the will of God is, right? What is the will of God? What is this will of God that we need to cherish, that we need to glorify, that we need to adjust ourselves? 
to praise, to hold dear in our hearts? What is it? How can we glorify the will of God? So we need to do an inner search to know what is our will and to know what is a more sublime will. It's when I have free time and I say, yes, I can choose if I sleep, if I stay awake, if I eat, if I drink, if I talk, if I keep silent. God, what do you want me to do? I would like you to say a prayer to the people who are in the hospitals. Now, and then we reply, now? Yes, now. Oh, but no, no. Uh, can I do it when I go to sleep? No, I, I think we should do this now. Do we accept it? Or like Stephen, in the book, Paul and Stephen, so beautiful, but real, when he gets to know that their house is going to be confiscated unjustly. And what is his reply? Is he indignated? No. He says to his father, Dad, it's okay. We're going to leave this home, and then we're going to find another home. And in that home, we're going to work for the benefit of the three of us. Because if, if God, whom we love, has been taking care of us for generations, why can't we trust God's will? But do we understand that? No, we don't. We bump heads, bump heads. We bicker. Some people, they, they really get into a fight with God. God doesn't fight. I agree. On God's end, nothing. But we have this mirage. It's like an illusion, thinking that we are far struggling with God. Why is it happening to me? Why me? Why not somebody else? Et cetera, et cetera. So we begin Gilon Ribeiro's message by identifying our level of praising God, which is a law. It's a law, the law of worship. For those who want to read more, we would recommend the Spirit's book in its Third part, you're going to find chapter two, Law of Worship. In there, we're going to dissect with Kardec and the Good Spirits what it is all about. But it's important to contemplate the deeds of God, nature, ourselves as God's creation, and work with it in admiration. Do you admire the things of God? Do you admire the things of God? These are questions for all of us. So let us think about it. One, do I admire the things of God? We can write it down. And then he says, your humble companion, he's talking about himself, incorporated into the caravan of workers of goodwill, not for merits that fail us, but because we have received an increased increase of mercy that the infinite goodness of the Lord never refuses to the spirit awakened to the deeds of his own generation, regeneration. We associate today to your prayers and tasks, supplicating the blessings of Jesus on our behalf, so that our energy and good spirit will not fail us. In the help of our brothers who brutalized themselves after death or who beyond it, they became unfortunate masters of selfishness, cruelty, violence, and hatred. What is he saying to us? 
He's saying, first of all, I want to share with you that this is the first time after his death in 1943. So this is year 55. So we're talking about 12 years later. It's the first time that he comes to deliver a message through Chico Xavier, 12 years later, first time, Guillaume Ribeiro, okay? So the other thing we wanna say is this, he's saying that he is now in that group in the city of Pedro Leopoldo in a spiritual task force to help in the disobsession meeting assisting everyone. He is not a constant worker of the meeting, but he's present at night. And he says that he is there out of God's mercy, not out of his merit. It's amazing how we humble ourselves in the afterlife, right? I'm not saying he wasn't humble, I'm just saying how important it is for us to learn to ground ourselves here. When Jesus says, don't seek to be the first, to take the first seats, but allow yourself, you know, to be the last one because the last will be the first. It's a good practice. I know we don't say it to our children much, but it's important to tell them it's okay. If there is always that friend in school who is like, pick me, pick me, showing off. But may you never be that person because it's so sad, you know? So sad to be a show off, right? So sad. One thing is to speak up when you need and help and say your opinion. Another is the pick me person, you know, that is always like, me, me, me. That behavior is not good. Guilherme Ribeiro is telling us humbly. He's not there helping because he's a superior spirit. He is helping because he's regenerating himself. If we practice that attitude here while on earth, we're going to be much better off. Because sometimes... We start gaining projection socially in our communities. And abuse of power happens without noticing. Pride escalates without noticing, especially because people still believe in the power of positions. You know? And because of that, people may start becoming blind and then they use masks, masks that are so deceiving, especially, especially in religious fields, especially in the spiritist circles. Any title of any sort is a task and a call to serve, never it will be a merit title. Never, 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 ever, ever, okay? By the way, we spiritists, when we reincarnate, and that's why I'm gonna to say to you, because the next paragraph has everything to do with it. He says to us things that pertain to our reincarnatory plan. When we were in the spiritual realm, majority of, not, of us, if not to say all of us, we were given mercifully the opportunity to reincarnate in countries that are accessible for spiritism, because there are many countries in this world where spiritism is going to take a long time to, to reach. But this mercy of God comes because one, we need it for our regeneration, the awareness of spiritism. Second, because through the works in the spiritist league, 
the spiritist harvest, we are to redeem ourselves. For you who know spiritism, doing works of beneficence and charity like helping the poor is important. But helping those in two realms related to the spiritist works is the real deal. It's not enough to do what everybody else does. You and I are being asked to do one step ahead. Because we're better? No. Because we asked, we said, to pay these debts, you'll be given this opportunities to be a medium, to be a counselor, to be a pest giver, to be a, a, an educator for children, etc. These are the ways we're going to pay with love. But then what happens when we come here? You want to know, right? Because Guillaume Ripet is going to say it. I know when we hear this, we're like, oh, no, I don't want to hear it. But we have to hear it because we're still reincarnated. There is still time. He says, ah, his interjection. He says, ah, oh, my friends, how many legionaries of our great cause to the delight of the shadows that generate discord in the grave hour we are going through? How many fall asleep on the fringes of the commitments made, drunk on the opium of indifference, blind to the mission of spiritism as the promised paraclete promised by the Christ of God. They are deaf to the reality that calls upon them with exhilarating appeals to the work of the gospel. How many are mesmerized in the anti-fraternal strife in which they squander the resources the Lord lend us, turning recklessly into the life instrumentality of denial and darkness. Ouch. Ouch, super ouch, yes. And I say this just to make it a little lighter because this is heavy. It's reality check. Don't feel guilty, hold on to this. You don't need to feel guilty. We don't need to point fingers to anybody. Let us just study it to observe the process. He's saying that many people who are supposed to work in spiritism. Instead of doing so, what do they do? To the delight of the shadow of darkness that generates discord. So he's giving a tip. If discord comes, watch out. In the grave hour, grave hour, and you think it's only now, it has been grave on earth. It has been. And he says, fall asleep under the opium of indifference. It's when I meet people who say, me? You're inviting me to work? Yes, you. But who am I? I think you're a child of God. But no, you have potential. Let's work. Uh, 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 and then people are like, no. And then you think, who else? You're going to be indifferent to it all? How many people know the spiritism? But fewer those who want to roll their sleeves and work. Majority are sleeping. Sleeping, he says, indifferent. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give bread to the poor. Yeah, but that everybody else does. But you who are spiritists, you need to do that plus this. That plus this. Because we know more. We can't cross our arms and say, yeah, I'm just going to help a little bit. No. We're being asked to do that in this. It's hard. Because you go to the group, people think differently. So we need to practice tolerance. It's beautiful to go to the streets nowadays and say, let us help equality. But when we are in a mini group, we don't tolerate people's opinions. We don't tolerate people's ways of being. And you're like, ah, oh, I'm not going to that meeting because that person is this way, because that person is that way. And then it's beautiful to say, let's be tolerant in the street. And then you go home, there's no tolerance at home. There's no tolerance in the spiritist center. There's no tolerance in the spiritist group. People are different, that's beautiful. And it's beautiful. It's hard, it's intense. Oh yes, there are days you don't sleep, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful because we grow, we progress. It's God's will saying, I need you to be more patient. I need you to be more tolerant. I need you to be more resilient and to be more altruistic. Think less of yourself. For my sake, God's saying, for his sake. We say for God's sake, right? Can we be more altruistic? Think less of ourselves. Oh, why do you do this? Because God wants us to do it. Period. But what do you gain? The happiness of everybody. Because this works if there is one, one word in all of it that boosts the joy in somebody, the courage, the resilience, the endurance, empowering them. That's it including the discarnates. Because when you and I come to these meetings, online, offline, physically, we are surrounded by spiritual company that is benefiting from it. Read the book, Sex and Destiny. No, there was no Zoom meeting at the time. No, no Facebook, no social media, but there was Claudio in the hospital. His daughter, Marita, is in a coma. He comes to know spiritism. He is there seated in the hospital, in the room where his daughter is. She's in a coma. He gets the gospel according to spiritism, opens, and he's reading. And as he's reading, the spirit, Moreira, who is often with him, not very evolved, he starts learning, learning by Claudio reading the book. Well, it's not enough. You have to have to go to the spirit center to receive the passes, to give the passes, and so on and so forth. So here we have Guilon Ribeiro talking about the case number one, those who are supposed to work and they are indifferent, they are sleepy. They give excuses. They give spiritism to themselves and to a few. 
and they were supposed to work to disseminate spiritism around the world, or at least around where they're living, even if we form a mini group. Yeah, remember Chico Xavier, when his sister became sick, obsession. A couple, a couple, this was year 1927, a couple came to help and started doing meetings with Chico, the couple and Chico Xavier. Imagine if they said, oh, it's not worthwhile. Who are you? You don't have the fourth grade. Your family's poor. And you have so many duties to fulfill. Why am I going to waste my time studying spiritism with you? We wouldn't be here, you and I. Because it took Chico Xavier to bring this message that unites us tonight. So what are you waiting? Because we can't be indifferent. We can't, we can't fall asleep. And of course, if you're doing your thing, great. But if you're not, you're being recruited. You're being reminded. We can't be blind to the mission of spiritism. What is the mission of spiritism? To push the progress of the earth by exterminating materialism. Exterminating materialism. Exterminating materialism. And what is materialism? Anything that makes us attached to matter. That feeling of my family and I as if we are the universe and everybody else is just the remaining people or the extra. That's materialism. Materialism is when I give more of myself to the ones that are connected to me than to anybody else. Chico Xavier is an example of the opposite of it, right? Ah, Gabriel Inas, you're adorable. You are adorable. And so Souza, <laughs> you guys, you know, God bless you, we support you. But friends, let us remember, spiritism comes here to destroy materialism inside of us. It's when we feel that somebody is more important because of a title. Oh, they have a doctor degree. I do. Who cares? Doesn't make a difference. It makes a difference in my profession. But it doesn't make a difference in terms of who I am. No. The other day, somebody said they got to know of a mistake that uh, somebody who had a doctor degree made. And they said to me, that person has a PhD and does that. And I said, who said their PhD trained them morally? <laughs> None of us go for PhD degrees to learn anything about morality. Nothing. No, ethics, yes, but ethics related to work, not about anything else. So a title, a position, for example, I'm the president of a spiritist center. That doesn't change me because that, that's not a title of merit. That's, that's not even a title. It's just a, a work position. It's like the duties you have to fulfill. But that doesn't make me a better person or more important. On the contrary, it makes me more responsible. But not a better person. A person that needs more recognition, that's wrong. This is materialism. So he says, 
those who are deaf to the reality that calls upon them with exhilarating appeals to the work of the gospel. So deaf to the reality, meaning we hear, we don't practice. And the worst of it all, he says, the last case, those who are mesmerized or hypnotized in the anti-fraternal battles. It's about the people who talk about each other, who create plots against each other, and, and that is a crime. Sorry to say, but it's a crime. You know when somebody calls and say, don't invite that person to give a talk, that is not fraternal. That is not kind. When you keep somebody away, you know, Ribeiro is saying, from here, what I'm seeing, what these people are doing is a big mistake. And it's funny because back then, 1955, we didn't have this many messages and books that we do, but now we do. And it's so sad to see people who know and yet they don't do it. Right, Carol Correa. Yes, so any title is just a lot of credit before God. Meaning, if you get some credit, think about a credit card. If you use it, you have to give it back, right? You have to pay. Yeah, that's what letter of credit means. We'll be held accountable. We are responsible for what we've done. Now, listen to what he's going to say next. Believing to shine this doctrinal elucidation, these people draw, draw, He's saying draw, create inextricable labyrinth for the souls, still insecure, and that approaches to the wellspring of precious consolations. Presuming to worship the truth, they only get lost in the unfortunate rhetoric of those who nullify themselves under the narcotics of vanity, transforming the living water of faith that gushed from their hearts into a poison gall of madness and disturbance for themselves, or falling under the merciless blows from our unfortunate companions of the past beckoning from other reincarnations and from other ages. What is he saying? He's saying, we may often be so blind, fascinated by those titles, those competitions in, uh, in the doings of it all, which is vanity, that we may Transform the living order or what our faith into poisons of madness, meaning we're not going to end up well at the end of our lives, mentally speaking, or, or we will fall into obsessions because there are spirits from previous reincarnations or ancient times who are keeping an eye on us. Yesterday, when we were studying the message by Dr. Diaz de Cruz, he was talking about the therapy of prayer. And in that, he mentioned about the process of obsession again, saying that once we are in emotional complications, we are opening our doors for the spirits who are just 
lurking us. They are just keeping an eye. It's very dangerous. So he's saying, presuming to worship the truth. And then you ask, and I ask too, because we're studying together. How do I know if what I'm doing and what I am thinking is true is not true? How do I know? One day I asked Mentor Joseph this question. And he said, Vanessa, rule of thumb, if what you do, if what you think is going to benefit people who are suffering, and suffering in the sense of they need more knowledge, they need consolation, they are going to feel better, then that's the way to go. You're never going to go wrong. But if you do it out of egocentric motives, like many people, they don't focus on the doing. They focus on showing that they are doing. They do one thing and they use a trumpet. And it sounds like they did it 10. They did 10 things. They did one and they say, do, 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 do. And people are like, whoa. And it sounds like they did a lot. But when you have focused on the people who are suffering, there is no time to trumpet. There's no time to market yourself. There's no time. Because you're always focused, like Chico Xavier. He didn't have time to think about marketing the books. He said, I'm not gonna waste my time with it. And we have letters, books, that tell how Valdo Vieira was concerned about it. He wanted Chico Xavier to change the way he was publishing the books. But look where Valdovir is now. God bless his heart, whatever he is. And I'm sorry to repeat this message about Valdovir, but where is he now? He's not working on spiritism. It's going to take him 1,500 years, said Emilio, to come back to the same possibility. Why? Because he really dropped the ball. Big time. To the eyes of the world, he was just minding his life, but in the eyes of his conscience, he failed. He failed. Because he was focusing on marketing. He was focusing on showing, on impacting, on becoming a guru. We need to pass the microphone, like we do here at Cardiac Radio. We have several hosts. And in our meetings, we have people who coordinate, we take turns. Why? Because we are working together. And there is nobody who is the center. We organize ourselves. There must be organization. But we can't claim that we have the truth. We can't pretend. I see people nowadays in non-spiritist organizations where they have gurus, they suffer. And it's so limiting because those gurus didn't teach their people to think for themselves. That's the main difference between Jesus Christ and everything else. Jesus empowers you and I to think, to reason. Unlike so many other traditions in which, oh, this tradition says this, but think for yourself. Does it make sense? Ah, uh, I don't know. Well, think. If God gave you intelligence, please use it. 
your guru cannot think for you. You need to think for yourself. So here he's saying, this is why we pray to the Lord to keep us in that prayer and vigilance that expresses the worthy work and ardent charity with which we must honor the altar of struggle on which we have been called to serve him. Why did Jesus say watch and pray? Because we need to do what Mentor Joseph says. Watch, Vanessa. If what you're doing is for the benefit of people, and if that's the real reason, do it. But if it's just for your ego to show about you and the things, don't do it. Even if it sounds like you are marketing spiritism, and I say marketing to disseminate, to publish, to. But if it's about you, don't. If it's about the consolation, if it's about sharing the bread of love, do it. Even if people think you're doing for yourself. Because they said it about Jesus, the disciples. They're going to talk about you and everybody else. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you think about yourself. Be very honest with you. But don't avoid doing the work with that false modesty. That's what we call fake bragging, right? Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that program because who am I? Who am I? I'm a nobody. I'm just the, the parakeet of the spirits reading their messages. But I'm not going to avoid doing the work to show that I'm not a show off. You see, two extremes. One in which people say, Yes, I'm doing this because I want to disseminate and instead they just want to talk about themselves. And the other one is about when we don't do it because we think if we do it, we're going to be too proud of ourselves. We need to avoid these two extremes. And I often see the two extremes around in the spiritist movement. When people do it, Claiming that they are disseminating, but it's only about themselves. And the second, and I say this, when I see lots of conversations in spiritism nowadays, so dangerous. I don't think people need to worry about our opinions. It's about the teachings. The teachings say, the teachings say, the teachings say, like in science, when we talk about science, in the universities, we don't talk about our opinions. Our discussions are always scientifically based, evidence-based. It's not about our opinion. Oh, we do this because in the literature it says, and it makes sense, but not because I think. Two different points of view. And there are people who avoid doing the work because they think they are going to be um, a show off and they are, you know, afraid of, of being in this feeling of pride, etc. So two extremes. We need to avoid both. He says, we need prayer and vigilance that expresses worthy work. So we need to work. And not work like giving food and bread and clothes to the, to the needy one. We're talking about spiritist work. And ardent charity, which is, what is that? Benevolence towards everyone. Indulgence towards the imperfections of others. And 
forgiveness of offenses. Which we must honor the altar of struggle on which we have been called to serve. So does it say it's easy? No, but we have to do. And then he finishes by saying, believe that spiritism is the restorer of Christianity in its primitive and glorious purity and that sincere spiritists are par excellence today, the Christians most directly responsible for the substantiation of the teachings that our divine master left to humanity. I know many spiritists around the world who say, ah, I'm afraid about talking. I'm afraid of talking about Jesus because people don't understand about Jesus where I am. And then we reply, that's why you're being called as a spiritist in that area, because you need to repair our mistakes of the past when we created this mess. And now we need patience and tolerance to bring back the real Christ, the one that we, in previous lives, did not allow people to see. And now they refuse to see it. It's on us to educate patiently, to be there kindly, so they can feel that presence of the Christ Consoler. And they say, oh my gosh, that's Christ. I didn't know, because I thought it was that one that people used to say. No, 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 this is the Christ. He's your friend. He smiles, he caresses, he's understanding, he's loving and lovable. He's your best friend. Let us therefore seek our place. Let us therefore seek our place as apprentices and servants, understanding the value of opportunity and time. Let us offer our lives to spreading the Christ consciousness, beginning with ourselves, pleading with the spirit of our blessed mother to enlighten us in the road to the divine shepherd's home. Thus, vigilant to the obligations to which we engage, in the works of light and love, let us praise the goodness of our Heavenly Father forever. He begins talking about praising God and he ends talking about glorifying God's will. Right, Hercules, Melissa, Nina, Luciana, Tuani, big hug to you guys. I miss you. Elisa Rodriguez, Ana Luisa, Renata Casadei. Luciana, right, friends? Think about it. Think about it. Wow, super wow, super wow. Everything that he's saying here. What is the exercise for the next 24 hours? Oh my gosh, what is it? What is it? It's a question. It's a question. Since you have come to embrace spiritism, do you feel yourself as an apprentice and a servant in the cause of spiritism? Do you feel it? In the next 24 hours, let us ask this question. Do you feel yourself, as Guilherme Ribeiro is saying, let us seek our place as apprentices and servants in spiritism. Do you feel yourself in that way? Because friends, anywhere in this world, you can do anything. But that is being done by other people. But if you and I, all of us, whatever you are, whatever I am, we focus like Chico Xavier did. He could have done 10,000 things. Divaldo Franco could have done 10,000 things, but they said, I'm going to be humble. 
I don't want the recognition of the world because some people tell me, Vanessa, I want to do something to reach out to more people. That's vanity. You can't be bigger than the master. You can't. So let us humble ourselves and be there in our field of work. Working daily like a faithful farmer. Whether one person is being benefited by the food we're cultivating or not. Two people, a million. It's not on us to decide the field in which we're going to cultivate the seeds of God. God asks you and I to be faithful in the spirit is harvest. Let us humble ourselves. Forget the numbers. Forget recognition. Let us be faithful. Watching and praying, as he says, in worthy work, in ardent charity. This is it. Right, Nina Dui? Thank you for your love. Let us pray together because watching and praying, we are watching. Watching, you're watching, I'm watching. I'm watching you, you're watching me here. So let us pray together to make this moment ever more special for us, shall we, friends? Since he said, Mother Mary, I have to put the Ave Maria because Mother Mary is our mother, the blessed mother. I'll never forget, blessed mother. Let us pray, friends. Let us join each other in heart to heart praying. Let us pray. Dear Mother Mary, We want to thank you for listening to Guilherme Ribeiro and bringing his message to us, inviting us to adjusting ourselves, calibrating ourselves. Humbling ourselves. We want to be apprentices and servants in the harvest of the Christ. Being apprentices, we are ready to learn. And as servants, we are ready to work. We don't want to choose the task. We want to fulfill our duty in love, with love, for love, and to love, the divine love. We pray at this moment for those who are in greater need than ourselves. We pray for those who are sick in the hospitals. For the doctors and the nurses, the administrators, the staff, the families of those who are sick. We pray, dear God. For those who are indignated, for those who are feeling anger, or indulging in their passions, 
sensual pleasures, destructive mental waves. We pray that they feel the whisper of their loved ones who care for them, reminding them that they deserve the renewing path. Thank you, God, so much for your mercy, for uniting us. And we visualize the world being embraced in healing vibrations, vibrations of joy, vibrations of fraternity, where equality is felt at greater levels. For those who are feeling discriminated. We want to embrace them and remind them that they are children of God. That others' opinion do not define them. And that together we can build your kingdom on earth. God. Glory to you, to your will, that is absolutely love. We pray for peace inside of our hearts and in the world. And we pray most of all for goodwill amongst ourselves. Thank you for sending Jesus to us. Thank you for sending Spirit to sin. And for this message by Gilão Ribeiro, through Chico Xavier, in the illumination in our lives. And so be. Thank you so much, dear friends, for joining us for this partnership in our study, in our prayer. And we wish you a lovely day or night, wherever you are. And let's not forget this study. Huh? You want to be an apprentice and a servant in spiritism? Hmm? If you do, there are many good teachers in the beyond awaiting your disposition so they can operate through you, helping many others. We wish you many blessings and let us keep these immortal messages in our hearts. And hopefully tomorrow we'll be together, God willing, in another immortal message here at Kardec Radio, where we're always nourishing our souls. Thank you, friends. <music>